In a discovery that could rewrite history and shatter our understanding of the deep, a Filipino fisherman stumbled upon a creature of myth and legend, a mermaid. The stunning encounter, captured on video, has sent shockwaves around the globe, raising questions about the existence of these elusive beings and the secrets hidden beneath the ocean's surface. Prepare to be captivated by a tale that blurs the lines between fantasy and reality as we delve into the details of this extraordinary find. First up, we have the Australia sighting. A video that was uploaded in 2010 has recently resurfaced that was taken at the Great Barrier Reef. The footage shows a mysterious creature, a mermaid, swimming in the distance. Now, the video has more than 2.7 million views, and there's another video as well from the same person, which has more than 4 million views. The narrator of the video explains how he went to the Great Barrier Reef in Australia to test an underwater cage that he had recently bought. Two films were recorded, explains the narrator. He said he was testing out his camera and how to operate it, and he felt something behind him. He added that he only spotted the mermaid after he watched the footage on the computer. He never saw her in real life. Now he claims that the video is real, not edited, not faked. Some people are claiming it's just a human in a costume, but I don't know. It looks pretty real to me. Up next, we have the Canada sighting. In June 1967, a mermaid was spotted on Main Island. She was seen in the early evening by passengers on ferries close to the west entrance to Active Pass. The Daily Colonist reported the sightings and included a photograph. Several witnesses said the mermaid had a large fish, apparently coho salmon, and one swore she had taken a bite out of it, the colonist said on June 13th, 1967. Long silver blonde hair and topless condition were generally agreed upon. Now the next day, the colonists referred to her as the dimpled mermaid and said that she had the lower body of a fish or porpoise. The newspaper said she had been at Helen Point and had been seen eating a large salmon. A Cobble Hill man who flew over the area shortly after 7 p.m. managed to get an aerial photograph, which which reportedly corresponded closely to another photo taken. Then on June 15th, the newspaper reported that a $25,000 reward would be offered for the dimpled mermaid of Active Pass. The offer was made by Charles White of the Undersea Gardens, who added that a panel of competent marine biologists would have to confirm that the mermaid was the real thing. He also promised to negotiate a contract with the mermaid. I think we could come to terms. We would offer a substantial salary, room and board, and a supply of those special combs that mermaids use, he said. Now, unfortunately, no mermaid came forward, and the story kind of just disappeared. Moving on to the Jamaica sighting. Jamaica seems to be a hot spot for mermaid sightings. I mean, there are hundreds of them. From YouTube to TikTok to Reddit, people have been sharing their stories. Now, this particular video was taken at Flatbridge, where there have always been rumors of sightings. Now, in the video, you can hear people saying it's a mermaid. Watch, a mermaid, Jesus. Oh, She's gone, a woman says. Now, Daniel Gale, who has been diving and fishing in the area for the last 10 years, says the river has a season when the mermaid wants blood, and that's when a series of accidents usually occur. Whenever the river changes its color and gets dirty like now, that's when it's dangerous, and that's usually when the mermaid is active, Daniel told the star. It's said that the only thing that will quiet the mermaid is blood, so as soon as it's satisfied, all accidents will cease. Now, it seems like this mermaid is no Little Mermaid type and is more evil than people thought. Now we have caught in a net. Fishermen are pretty brave. They sail in stormy weather. They've seen all different types of animals. Nothing can really scare them. Well, that is unless they stumble upon a mermaid. In a viral video, it appears that some fishermen caught a mermaid in a net. Now they didn't need to do this. They were just trying to see what fish they caught and boom, a clearly humanoid arm with a webbed hand reached back at them from the net as if it was trying to grab the men. Now the men leaned back to avoid it, and unfortunately the net slipped and fell back into the ocean. They then scrambled to lean over the side of the ship to see if they could catch another glimpse of the creature, but they couldn't. And whatever they saw got away, never to be seen again. Now let's talk about the Spain sightings. While it's rare to even see a mermaid, spotting a mermaid in the same place twice is even more rare. But it seems like Spain is the place for this to happen. Travelers on a cruise noticed a figure sitting on a distant rock 
deep within the ocean. Upon closer observation, it became clear that this figure was a mermaid, sunbathing, and relaxing. They recorded the video in Morocco, Spain. Then this other video was taken by two friends who were surfing together. They were just recording each other and having fun, but it seems like they actually caught a mermaid on film too. You can see its tail coming out of the water and going back in. Now as they both spot the creature in the water, you can tell that they're scared and they decide to leave, which was probably the best option because they would not want to get dragged underwater by that thing. Now the most recent sighting is the 2023 sighting. In this extremely viral TikTok clip, Seafarer, who goes by the username at .sauce.90 on social media, his real name being Ryan Coleman, filmed two mysterious figures swimming by his boat as it traveled through the choppy waves. Now as he records, his voice can be heard saying, what are those, what's going on? Pointing the camera at the sea, he notes, something swimming fast underneath the water, something swimming real fast. Now everyone in the comments believes it's mermaids that are keeping up with his ship. Now a strange wailing can be heard in the background as he asks the camera, what the F is that noise bro, what is that noise? Then as he continues to remark that he can hear the strange intruders, a shrieking voice announces, jump for me. Now just hearing it creeps me out, just, just listen. Ugh, now how he was able to stay calm after hearing that is beyond me. Now on to the Israel sighting. In 2009, dozens of locals near Kirat Yam, Israel claimed to see a mermaid off the shore at sunset. Now these sightings went on for some time before the local media got involved. The onlookers said the creature resembled a young girl and would often visit the beach and do tricks in the water. Eventually the Israeli government noticed all the attention and issued a one million dollar reward for anyone who could provide proof of the mermaid. Now this didn't include capturing, it simply required an authentic photo. Now no one ever came forward, but in 2013, the most compelling piece of evidence to date was a video shot by two tourists. Now the pair thought they had spotted a seal on a rock just off the coast, but as the camera zoomed in, it became clear it wasn't a seal. It was a mermaid. Now despite the evidence looking real, the prize money has not yet been handed out, but hey, that footage looks real to me. Give those people their money, it's only fair. Let's discuss the Zimbabwe sighting. Mermaids don't really like being around humans, and I can't say that I blame them. Now this was made extremely clear in the case of the Zimbabwe dam workers in 2012, who were trying to install a water pump which was crucial to the local agriculture. Now local divers and workers were hired to see what was blocking the pump, and when they surfaced, they vowed to never return. Why? Because there was a mermaid there. Sam Sapia Nakoma, a water resource minister, told the Senate committee that the village chiefs could perform an ancient ritual to get rid of the mermaid and calm the workers' anxiety, but they still refused to return after the ritual was performed. Now being skeptical of the workers' reasons for quitting, the government hired outside help as they thought this belief was cultural, but the new workers reported the same thing and and refuse to finish the repairs. Now, to this day, the dam is still not finished. And hey, I wouldn't mess with a mermaid either. I think it's best that they left it alone. Next up, we have the Hawaii sighting. The island of Hawaii has plenty of folklore and legends around beautiful aquatic creatures, and the mermaid is one of them. For more than 50 years, people have reported seeing a mermaid off the coast of Hawaii's big island. But the sightings were never taken seriously until a dive boat captain finally captured the half woman, half fish on camera. Dive master Jeff Liker photographed the creature known as the Kauai Point Mermaid on April 12, 1998, as he and six other divers were exploring the ocean bottom about 20 minutes off Hawaii's sunny Kona coast. As Jeff was photographing some underwater life, a mermaid brushed up against him while swimming and turned back around just in time for him to snap a few pictures. He said, I feel very lucky that I'm the one to finally prove to the world what people here have known for half a century. The Kauai Point Mermaid is real. Now, this wasn't the only time he spotted the mermaid, as just a few hours before, he saw what looked like a nude woman swimming with a pod of dolphins. The woman was able to keep up the pace with the dolphins, which Jeff thought was odd. All of a sudden, she jumped into the air and he realized that she had the lower half of a fish. Now, 10 people on a boat witnessed this incident, but the mermaid disappeared after just two jumps out of the water. And lastly, we have the Minnesota sighting. 
A mysterious video claims to show the moment a mermaid was pulled from the water, prompting claims the mythical creatures do exist. The clip shows a green tail floating in the water and a figure being put onto a stretcher. The video was taken by an Australian tourist on a beach in Minnesota, but the precise location is unknown. According to Paranormal Elite, a YouTube channel which was sent the footage, the person who filmed it stayed behind after the beach was cleared. The man, identified only as Mackie, said large vehicles arrived with some people wearing yellow hazmat suits to protect them from dangerous materials. A Paranormal Elite spokesman said, The creature seen bears striking resemblance to the mermaids depicted in fictional stories. It remains a mystery whether or not mermaids do inhabit lakes in Minnesota. After all, what happens when the lake freezes in the winter? The enthusiast continued, I urge everyone to keep an open mind and come to a conclusion yourself. If this is in fact fake, the question arises as to why anyone would go to such lengths to hoax a video like this. Now, I honestly don't know if this is real or not. It truly just stumps me. Kicking off the list at number 10, Captain John Smith. Another sea captain, another claim. Who is it this time? Not the great Captain John Smith, famous for settling Jamestown. He didn't see a mermaid in 1614, did he? He did? I knew it, I always knew it. The same captain famous for his relationship with Pocahontas almost got into an entanglement with some mermaids, it seems. He spotted a mermaid off the coast of Newfoundland, apparently, and he couldn't keep his eyes off of her. He noted her long green hair imparted to her an original character that was by no means unattractive. That's what he says. You ever get caught checking out another girl? Try that line. But babe, I was imparted by her long green by no means unattractive hair. You know how it is, look at it. I'm only human. Smith noted her large eyes as well. Again, big eyes coming back in. Fine nose, well-formed ears, slight roast there. But once he realized her bottom half was a little fishy, he bolted. He saw the green hair and he's like, nice. Then he saw the fins and he's like, okay, I'm actually all set, see ya. Number nine, Hawaii. Heading over to Kauai Point, Hawaii. I've never visited, but I've always wanted to go. And now apparently they have mermaids, so I'm booking a flight. Reports came in around 1998 from Jeff Leacher. Jeff is a diver who runs the Jack's diving locker on the point. And he says, and I quote, I feel very lucky that I'm the one to finally prove to the world what people here have known for half a century. The Kauai Point mermaid, is real. You heard it here on Most Amazing Top 10, folks. Mermaids equals real. We got it. He was diving one day and he heard a group of people in a nearby boat screaming around, so he obviously looked to see if everyone was okay. He popped his head up, looked over, and saw a mermaid splashing around in the water. She had jumped in the air and she was doing flips, and it's at that point when he realized she was a half fish. I mean, obviously, or else just a really athletic chick just jumping out of the water just with raw strength. He actually claims to have gotten a photo of the mermaid as it was passing above him in the ocean. Check it out. A little too good to be true? Yeah, maybe, I don't know, it's a number nine for sure. What do we think? Comment down below. Number eight, Zimbabwe. The world did not end in 2012, thankfully, but it certainly got a little weird for those in Zimbabwe. Back in 2012, contractors were working on a dam, but they got interrupted one day when a mermaid just <gasps> appeared out of nowhere, just showed up and I was like, hi, stop, thanks. Living in Canada, I'd be more afraid of beavers when it comes to dams, but mermaids, I guess those are scary too. This mermaid appeared and the workers were so afraid, they were so shook that they refused to even finish the project. Even after rituals were performed on the water, the workers were still like, mm, nope, I'm all set, thanks. They had to fly in a whole new batch of workers just to get it going again, but they too also saw this mermaid. And they too also refused to finish the project. Delay after delay. Do you think it was a mermaid or is something else really going on here? If I was being paid unfairly, I would probably lie about a mermaid as well to refuse work, yeah. Try that at your next job. Just say you saw a mermaid at booth 11, so now you gotta sign out. Just a fish sitting in a booth like, hi, what's a special? Number seven, Kai Islands. Back in 1943, Japanese soldiers were posted up on the Kai Islands in Indonesia. They claimed to have run into a mermaid numerous times, just like the Zimbabwe Dam. It's like it's their territory, almost. Which makes sense why they would be upset about a new dam, right? That's a mermaid highway you're trying to close, brother. Stop. On the Kai Islands, there were multiple encounters with multiple mermaids. The villagers referred to these creatures as orang ikan. Orang translates to human and ikan to fish human fish. While on patrol, Sergeant Taro Hariba had instructed the village chief to pass on any and all information if anybody sees one of these fish things, right? 
Well, somebody saw one, captured it, and Sergeant Hariba recalls the mermaid as being around five feet tall, skin was pinkish, and its face was human, but it had spikes around their head. And its mouth was that of a fish's mouth. So yeah, pretty hard to forget, I'd say. This was 1943, so the scientific community wasn't exactly sold off of this, so nothing ever came to be from this. But I weirdly believe this one. I don't know, a carp mouth is more believable than silvery blonde hair, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. Number six, Christopher Columbus. On his first trip overseas in 1493, Christopher Columbus claims to have seen not one, not two, but three mermaids. He even wrote about it. He said they rose well out of the sea, but they are not so beautiful they are said to be, for their faces had some masculine traits. Awesome. He's like, yeah, they're actually not that attractive because they look like guys. I'm like, awesome, thanks Chris. Maybe you should uh, keep your eyes on where you're heading rather than trying to spot mermaids. I don't know. Just a little advice from the future. Historians believe Columbus may have gotten confused, classic Columbus, and he sought manatees instead of mermaids. Their skin is also pink and fleshy, so that's a fair mix up, I guess. Maybe that's what everybody has been seeing this whole time. Still, I wanna believe. Don't you? Let's move on. Number five, ancient Romans. Oh, we're going way back for this one. Interesting, okay. The first century ancient Roman naturalist Pliny the Elder, he wrote a book, we've mentioned it on here a few times now, it's called Natural History, and this is like the holy grail of ancient history, okay, of ancient knowledge. In it, the Elder wrote about mermaids, oddly enough, these half-human, half-fish creatures that Pliny called nereids. The Elder added to his observation detailing that even the human parts of the body were covered in rough scales. The Elder also recalled seeing a seaman who would climb ships at night and eventually sink the ships, like overnight. Some Assassin's Creed mermaids? That's a DLC I'd buy, hands down. Number four, Jenny Hanivers. Back in the 1500s, numerous mermaids were appearing in Antwerp. They had appeared so often that sailors had a nickname for them now. They were called Jenny Hanivers. Now, not only did they approach tourists, which, terrifying, but they were also all business as well. They were all businessmen with fish bottoms, just Try to sell you things. Yeah, they would sell objects to tourists. Imagine hanging out by the sea, relaxing one day, and then a manfish approaches you trying to sell you a cigar. I'm like, can you go back? What, where did you even come from? Also, you smell like fish. They were also referred to as devil fish, and perhaps they were the enemy of Christ. One of those two things, so you really don't know what to expect when a mermaid approaches you, so just a heads up, be careful. They may try and sell you something, or they might try and get you to sell you their soul. I just like doing that. I'll do mermaid lists all day if I can just do it like this. It's more of a snake, but you know, I'm, I'm trying my best. Number three, oh Canada. Being a Canadian, we have to include a Canadian sighting of a mermaid. Of course, I missed this one. I wasn't born just quite yet. This was reported back in 1967 in British Columbia when a group of tourists were on a ferry, they apparently saw a fish person. A, a mermaid. They all thought they saw a legit mermaid because of their silvery blonde hair. Was she splashing around in the shallow water? Was she doing backflips as she jumped over the waves? Nope, she was just sitting there enjoying lunch. The tourists all report this mermaid sitting down eating a salmon while the waves crashed over her tail. That's like a deleted scene from Little Mermaid. The city was jazzed about this, I guess. So they put out a reward for $25,000 for this mermaid in hopes that it was a hoax or somebody would turn up, but sadly nothing happened. Number two, whales. I mean whales as the place, not whales like, mm. this, is, this is all mermaid talk here, okay? In 1603, off the coast of Wales, numerous reports were flooding in about a sea creature, humanoid fish monster. Nice, nice and calm report there. This time, it wasn't a sailor. It wasn't a dehydrated, confused guy behind the wheel of a boat. It was near Pendine, and it was a farmer named Thomas Reynold. He first saw it nearby on the shores, and then like a normal dude, he called others over to witness it as well. Because yeah, back then you can't take a photo, that's, not even close yet, so he's like, hey, hey, look at this, oh my god, and then people ran over. They all stood by and watched this thing for around three hours. All the accounts were collected, and since it was, again, 1603, some dude had to draw out what they were talking about. Sounds exhausting. And this was the closest they could all get. I mean, that's believable and all, but I really hope this was a mermaid, or else maybe a bunch of dudes just gathered around and watched some fish mate. Or they watched someone drown for three hours, I don't know. Don't, like, go check it out. It looks like a person, I know, right? Like, bro, go help, what? And finally, number one, sirens. Ben Stiller may think he's a glamorous merman, but in the 13th century Norwegian manuscript, these fish-human hybrids were described accurately. They were described as terrifying. I'm fairly positive that if mermaids were real right now, they're not like aerial at this point. It's kind of hard to sing under the sea when a plastic bag wraps around your face, you know, mid-chorus. These mermaids were referred to as sirens, monsters, described as tall and great of size, shoulders like a man, but no hands. Like one of these. 
aka fish person. Whenever the monster would appear, historically, doom was meant to follow. It was a bad omen, obviously. Kind of like the Goblet of Fire, those mermaids. Those mermaids were a mess. Oh my god, what a horrible school that was. Terrifying. When the 18th century rolled in, Europeans and the Dutch Indies discovered plants and creatures that had never been seen prior. So, naturally, they would document these new discoveries in detail. And in 1718, a painter named Samuel Fallers claimed to have discovered and caught a siren, a mermaid. He brought her into his home, apparently, and drew this on the spot. And after day four of living in a container of water, the mermaid died. She purposely didn't eat and she starved herself to death. She refused to eat in this container. What a ride or a die. Again, this was 1718, so part of me thinks, maybe this happened, I don't know, why lie? I mean, we make up stories and movies and all that jazz now, but you know, James Cameron makes billions of dollars for it. Back then, there's no reason. It's like, hey, look at this painting. And they're like, cool. There's no reason to lie. Also, the fact that it's accurate to other sightings around the world in different centuries, it's a tad convincing. What do we think, folks? The Next, at number 10, we have Ariel is a schizo. I came across a convincing Reddit theory regarding Ariel the Little Mermaid posted in the Disney subreddit. So the theory was posted by 7th LTR who said Ariel is a schizophrenic. They claim that the voices in her head are Flounder and Sebastian. They tell her that the world is better inside her head, aka under the sea. She longs to be normal or part of this world. Her father, Triton, is overprotective of her because of her schizophrenia. Ursula is really Ariel's doctor. She gives Ariel medicine to stop the voices in her head. She gives her legs. But because she has been living in her own world, she doesn't know how to communicate with normal people, aka she can't talk in the movie. Eric is really a nurse that she becomes obsessed with. Eric develops the idea that Ursula is trying to steal Eric from her when Ursula transforms her into a beautiful woman and tries to lure Eric away from Ariel. Therefore she stops taking her medication and goes back into her own world, aka back into the ocean. Eric then tries to convince her otherwise, tries to convince her to come back out into the real world so she begins treatment again and learns how to live with the help of Eric. In the movie Ariel gets her legs, gets her voice and marries Eric and lives happily ever after. I'm honestly kind of with you as long as you're not suggesting that if Eric's her nurse they really got married because I feel like there are oaths you have to take about that kind of thing. But yeah, it works. Maybe under the sea is the barrels of Ariel's crazy mind. So we know Disney loves a good crossover, but this crossover theory is pretty dark. Coming into number nine, we have the Captain Hook theory. Hook, he's a nasty man of the ocean. He's a pirate who doesn't think twice about murdering the innocent. Is he the man who broke Ariel? Ariel's home? Maybe. So this theory is twofold. A red-haired mermaid is spotted hanging out with the other mermaids in the lagoon in Peter Pan. See here. The mermaid on the left who takes a dip looks a lot like Ariel. We get a closer look when the girls splash Wendy. Have a look. The mermaid on the left has Ariel's hair. Just imagine that coupled with Trident's eyes. In The Little Mermaid Ariel's Beginning, we learn that her mother was called Athena and was actually killed by pirates. Classic Disney bumping off a parent in a brutal way, right? Well, we know that Hook isn't great to the mermaids of the lagoon, so is it possible that Captain Hook and his cronies killed Ariel's mum? Probably. This might be why Triton hates humans so much, especially humans on boats. He's always looking to end those pirates. Speaking of dead parents, let's take a look at this sunken ship at number 8. This is another Disney shared universe theory. This comes as a result of the sunken ship that we see Ariel exploring at the beginning of The Little Mermaid. It looks rather a lot like the ship the King and Queen of Arundel sailed off on in Frozen. We know that they didn't make it back from that trip and perhaps this ship at the bottom of the ocean is the one that they sailed in. That could be true if The Little Mermaid is still set in Denmark like it was in the original. We suspect that the royal family of Arundel were travelling between kingdoms in Norway to Germany, Denmark being very much en route. That doesn't to me explain why Sebastian has a Caribbean accent though. Curious. Tangled star Zachary Levi even shared another theory about who caused the storm that sank the boat in the first place. King Blooming Triton, that's who. Which leads me to my next theory. Coming in at number 7, Triton tried to kill Eric. But like 
like, did he? It would make sense, right? We know that Triton is king of the ocean. In fact, it is heavily insinuated that he could be the son of sea god Poseidon. We know that he can get pretty angry and he has a glowing magical trident. He forbids Ariel from going to the surface and she does it anyway. Then a hurricane comes and smashes Eric's ship, but could it have been Triton's doing? He would in theory have that kind of power as king of the ocean and possible sea god. Evidence to this theory can also be found in the scene where he destroys Ariel's grotto with magic. He is lurking in the shadows and knows that Ariel has been to the surface again and that she rescued a human from drowning. But how could he possibly know that? Well, I think he saw her there, and he saw Prince Eric. Why else would he be bothered about a sunken statue? This is what Triton has to say about humans. I don't have to know him. They're all the same. Spineless, savage, harpooning fish eaters. In Suffice to say he's not a fan, and this is how he treats his daughter's disobedience. <laughs> Triton is the baddie all along. So speaking of baddies, does our number six theory now make a lot more sense? That's right, at number six we have Triton and Ursula are related. So they both have white hair and a pronounced brow. They are both very powerful and angry magic wielders. Is Ursula the sea witch Triton's sister? Some people have suggested that actually she's a jilted ex-lover of Triton's and that's why she's so jealous of Ariel who was a legitimate child of his. As I have no idea how the whole fishtail and tentacle thing would go down, let's sideline that for the moment and think about the brother and sister angle. It seems that in the 2006 Platinum Edition DVD release of Ariel the Little Mermaid, deleted scenes suggest that this was actually an early intention for the movie but it was never included in the narrative. It is however included in the Broadway show. Now, now I guess it makes the film a bit darker knowing that the sea witch would want to capture and manipulate the soul of her niece, doesn't it? Coming in to number 5, the ending isn't actually the ending. In the Ariel the Little Mermaid origin story by Hans Christian Andersen, the Little Mermaid is a princess who made a bargain with a sea witch in exchange for legs so she could meet a human that she rescued. Sure, sure, sure. The only thing is that in the origin, every time she walks using these legs she feels excruciating pain. Throughout the story her feet bleed regularly, it's pretty dark. She's told if she doesn't secure the love of the prince, she'll die. She does meet the prince who asks her to dance for him, which she does even though it's actual agony. How does he repay her? Well, he falls in love with someone else, breaking her heart. Taylor's oldest time. Her mermaid sisters sell their hair to the sea witch for a knife that offers the mermaid a way out. If she kills the prince and drips his blood on her legs, she can end her pain and become a mermaid again. Sadly for her, she loves him too much and instead, as the witch promised, she simply dies. Cool, great. Thanks for that Hans Christian Andersen. Now a lot of people think that actually this is more like the real ending of Disney's Ariel the Little Mermaid than the actual ending. They think that when Ariel jumped into the water to chase after the boat, she never made it and never stopped the wedding. Ursula married the princess Vanessa and Ariel went mad, imagining her life and the improbable way that she could have rescued her love. She later dies of a broken heart. Some more tragedy up next and I love this, this is some real Greek tragedy stuff right here at number 4. Ursula is the one who's cursed. There is a theory out there that says that actually Vanessa was Ursula's real form and that she is the one who's cursed. In Greek mythology there is a beautiful nymph called Skyla who was actually kind of awful. You know, like Vanessa. She taunted Circe, the daughter of the sun Helios, and out of jealousy, Circe poisoned the water that Skylar bathed in. When Skylar got into the ocean, she was changed into a monster with hideous tentacles. This monster would then sink ships and unleash her wrath in the Strait of Messina. Some people think that this story is actually Ursula's origin story, that she was a shady, sassy beauty called Vanessa, but she tricked someone, maybe Triton's wife, maybe someone else, who then decided to change her into a monster. And that is why she wants to get revenge. Coming into number 3, Ariel is an idiot. Isn't she though? Should little girls aspire to be like Ariel? For many reasons I think no, but fundamentally, Honey is an idiot. So here is how she reacts to a fork. Gosh, have you ever seen anything so wonderful in your entire life? Wow, cool. But uh, what is it? 
<gasps> I don't know. Like, mate, doesn't your dad's trident look a lot like a big fork? I get it that you might not know that it's used to eat with, but this reaction is just too pure. Even though she's taught to eat with a fork at a banquet with Eric and other humans, she still uses it to brush her hair. Like, honey is basic. Forks aside, here's my main gripe with Ariel. She signs her name in her contract with Ursula. She writes it. She writes Ariel. Now, if Ariel could sign her name, I think that she can write. Right? If she could write, why didn't she write who she was and explain her plight to Eric after she met him on the beach? Like, honestly, think about it. There are other ways of communicating. Saying she's not resourceful is maybe a kind way of putting it because she dumb. Coming into number two, we have the hidden imagery. So a lot of people think that they see phallic imagery in Ariel the Little Mermaid, and honestly, I get it. A lot of people say that they can see the male reproductive organ. I'm sorry, I didn't want to get this video demonetized, and you just can't say the word I'm looking for. In the movie poster, there looks to be, you know, some imagery there. Then there's this scene at the end of the movie where the priest seems to be getting pretty excited by the marriage. This actually led to an Arkansas woman filing a lawsuit against the Walt Disney Company in 1995, although she did drop the suit two months later. Interestingly though, Disney did cut the third knee in the movie remastering, so was there something weird going on and inappropriate for kids? Finally coming into number one, Ursula's magic comes from the Lord of Light. So let's talk about this necklace that Ursula has. The necklace that she slips on allows her to transform into Vanessa. It allows some kind of air of mystery and manipulation as to her image. Now, to me, this reminds me of the necklace that Melisandre wears in Game of Thrones. Melisandre is the Red Woman, the Red Witch, and a worshipper of the Lord of Light. Ursula is also a witch, and when she uses magic, it often involves a lot of light and fire, like the Red Woman's. When Melisandre takes off her necklace, she is old and haggard. When Ursula takes hers off, this goes down. Melisandre believes that she is doing good. She isn't as sassy as Ursula, but she's still pretty savage. Here's how it ended for her. They are fellow witches. Is Ursula a witch that gets her power from the Lord of Light? We do know that there are mer people in the Game of Thrones lore, so maybe. So guys, thank you for watching this episode of Most Amazing Top 10. What did you think to these scary Little Mermaid Disney theories? Let me know in the comments section down below. Before I go, I'm gonna read some comments from one of my most recent videos, The Scary Mysterious People in History Part 2. The most liked comment made me happy. It's from fellow Slytherin Sierra Jean who wrote, oh my goodness, Rebecca, I'm so glad you're back. You're awesome. Hello. Hello, and yay for being a Slytherin. Thank you. BBG Kaglizzi said, make this blue if you love most amazing top 10. Blue, 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 blue. I make it blue. Robin Donnelly, a lovely channel member with Angel Wing, said, Rebecca, you're strange in a good way. Unique, pretty with an awesome fashion sense. I can't say that. Ugh. I love this video even though I'd heard about most of them, but there are a few that I wasn't aware of and I found them intriguing. As for Amelia Earhart, I wish they could get on testing the DNA of those bones as I believe that they may very well be hers, thus solving the mystery. I know, test them bones, what's stopping them? Thank you guys once again for watching this video. Don't forget to let me know which Ariel the Little Mermaid character you think you are and do you think I'd be a good chef? I think so. Fish, fish, fish. He has the best song and he's crazy and I love it. Good. Thank you. If you love our videos, then make that thumbs up button blue. Share this video with a friend and if you haven't yet joined our family of almost 6 million people, go ahead and do so now. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. It's about the darkest secrets in the ocean that you never knew about. Click the video now to find out more and prepare to have your mind blown. See you guys in the next one.